Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Gone Fishing. This is the second official episode that's going up here and uh, as you can see by the title of this video, we are going to be spreading a little bit of positivity today in Marlin's land. It's uh, not very often you get to do that over the course of the last few years, so we're going to take these wins where we can get them a very good week for your Miami Marlins. Of course, I'm wearing uh, jersey of the undefeated this year, Florida Marlins 2-0 in those flashback Friday games. Maybe a message to the team? Uh, 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 bring the seal back full time. So what? So I want to go over uh, just a few things here. Firstly being, we're going to talk about the bullpen today uh, and the effect that's had some of the additions that have been made over the offseason uh, and what we can kind of expect from them to come. Uh, the offense uh, starting to come alive a little bit. Uh, but first, let's start off with our players of the week. For the hitters on the Miami Marlins, you have, of course, none other than Luis Arias. Uh, he slashed 579, 636, 947. Uh, hit for the cycle on the 11th against the Phillies. Just, uh, I, I mean, you cannot hyperbolize how good he has been for this Marlins team thus far. Um, you know, I've made the comment a few times, and, and I really think it's pertinent, um, even if a little bit hyperbolic, but there's a good shot that we're we're watching a chase for 400 um, come July, August with this guy. I mean, the approach at the plate is just undeniable. Um, so he's just done so many good things. Nicked up his hand the other day, uh, sliding into home plate, uh, scratching it up against uh, one of the spikes of Phillies catcher JT Real Muto. Uh, but he should be fine. He was out of the lineup last night, but not a problem for the Marlins as they did collect a win. I want to give a congratulations to Trevor Rogers. By far his best start of the season. Uh, went six strong innings, struck out seven, allowed only one run. So good on him there. And that rolls us into the pitcher of the week, AJ Puck. Four innings pitched, 1-0, 0 ERA, 0.5 whip. He got the two inning save against the Phillies in, in the season finale there in that comeback victory. Uh, I can't say enough about the AJ Puck move. Um, as, as good as Luis Arias has been, uh, for stabilizing the, the lineup, uh, especially closer towards the top, uh, AJ Puck has been absolutely that for, for the bullpen this season. And, and, you know, I was a little skeptical of giving up on JJ Blade. I'll be the first one to admit it. Uh, I thought he had a really good approach at the plate. I still think he has a chance to be a solid, uh, MLB ball player, uh, but anytime you can go out and you can get yourself a real capital C closer, somebody that you can count on to close the door, uh, just makes life so much easier. And it appears that's what the Marlins have found uh, in AJ Puck. And not to just keep it at the at the major league level, uh, but I'm also doing some players of the week organizationally uh, in the minors. So big shout out to Peyton Burdick this week, uh, slashing 444, 565, 944. Uh, in five games at AAA, three homers, six runs batted in. He's been a, he's off to just an absolutely scalding start. Will be something to watch uh, with Barry Jackson signaling in in his article in the Herald that the Marlins are having internal conversations about how to approach the Abasayo Garcia situation. Obviously, you know over the off season he came in, uh, he lost a lot of weight. Uh, but he struggled in the in the spring, and he's off to just a really frigid start at the dish uh, today or this season. So there are those conversations that do need to be had in Marlins land, and I think that that's it's a good sign that we're hearing those conversations happening early um, because I think it's something that this it, it shows that this team is serious about trying to compete, and you can't let struggles you know, go on for this protracted amount of time, a month, two months, uh, especially with a guy that struggled last year as well. You know, if you wanted to say, well, he was really good last year and then he's he's off to a slow start this year, you understand that. Um, but just given everything that we've seen so far in the totality of his Marlins tenure, you do have to wonder if if there is an upside even there for, for Avi anymore. Um, and I, and I feel for the guy, I know that he's going through it with his confidence and he's trying to, uh, work things out. Uh, but the team has to do what the team has to do. It, it'll be interesting to monitor, especially if Peyton Burdick continues to rake at this kind of rate. Uh, the pitcher in the week of the minors, 
Uh, so it wasn't a great week uh, to be a, Mar uh, a pitcher in the Marlins organization, minor league wide. Uh, Brian Hoeing gets your pitcher of the week honors, uh, five and a third innings, uh, one run, no word, five strikeouts in a no decision. But I do want to, I, like I said, this is going to be a, a more positive episode. Uh, so I do want to talk about some of the things that uh, have really started to click for the Marlins, specifically over the course of this week here. Uh, so when we last left, left off, they were three and three or three and five. They go four and two this week. But one of the things, and, and this is something that I, I think gets swept under the rug a little bit when it comes to this week. The Marlins went four and two, and Sandy only made one start. And his one start actually represented one of the two losses this year, or one of the two losses this week. So in the five games that Sandy was not the starter, the Marlins went four and one on the week, which is a huge win uh, because normally – you know, with this team, it's it's kind of been, hey, let's let's tread around 500 uh, and then get to the Sandy starts. And so I think this team is proving, at least so far early on in the year, that they're not quite as Sandy reliant as they were last year. Uh, additionally, the other thing that I want to touch on that I think has been really important, aside from even Luis Sarais, is, is some of the other bats in the lineup that have been, you know, starting to come alive. Uh, Jacob Stallings, you won't see it showing up in the box score right now. He's been a little bit better of late, uh, but everything that he's put in play recently has been 100 miles per hour or more off the bat. He's been absolutely just stinging the ball. Uh, so you do assume that that'll start to find uh, grass. Jorge Soler, uh, so far this year, he's striking out at a 24% clip. He was striking out closer to 30%, about 296 last year. So the strikeouts are down. The exit below on, on Solaire is way up and the Babbitt is down. So that tells you that he's putting the ball in play quite a bit. He's stinging it, um, but he's just finding gloves. We saw that we saw that last night too with, I mean, he hit a rocket out to left field that was just right at the left fielder. Um, so you're looking at, at a guy like Solaire who we're seeing a better approach at the plate. And on top of that, he's hitting the ball harder than he ever has. The numbers will start to revert, you know, get closer to that 230, 240 range for him, um, you know, and continue to provide a, a punch in that Marlins lineup as he has to the tune of four home runs so far this season. Uh, another guy that's added punch to the Marlins lineup, maybe a little bit unexpectedly uh, so far this year, is Garrett Cooper. Uh, another great game last night, uh, batting average up to 370, OPS over 1,000 to start the season. Uh, three home runs, nine runs batted in for, for Coop thus far. He has been absolutely fantastic of late for the fish. And then Brian De La Cruz as well. De La Cruz had the had the game uh, game winning RBI single against the Phillies. Uh, he went three for four last night. His batting average for this season is up over uh, 300 now, OPSing 774. I mean, if you can get even a 750 OPS out of, out of uh, De La Cruz. I think, I think Marlins fans will be ecstatic with that uh, really solid game out of John birdie. He started to stabilize recently. He's a huge plus as utility man when he's going right. But as much as the offense has, has given us reason to be a little bit more positive uh, it's not quite the, the most positive thing this week. So the one, the, the big topic is, Definitely the bullpen. So the bullpen this this week uh, gave you 22 and two thirds innings uh, across the six games. So they're giving you you know three almost four innings per game, uh, and they've allowed eight earned runs in those six games. However, five of those eight were given up by Devin Smoltzer in that 15 gate or in that uh, 15 to to three drubbing uh, of the Miami Marlins at the hands of the Philadelphia Phillies. He gave up uh, five earned runs in four innings. So if you were to completely ignore that, you're looking at 18 and two-thirds innings, three earned runs. That's about an ERA, a little under 1.5. The bullpen has been sparkling. Um, and this is where I think if you want to give the Marlins credit for addressing a specific hole in the roster, whether it be in the lineup, I don't think they're completely there yet. There are conversations that need to be had about Jazz in center field still. Uh, he hasn't quite picked it up just yet. And quite frankly, those conversations are going to continue to be had 
uh, until either the Marlins go out and acquire a center fielder um, that can do the job if Jazz continues to struggle at center and they move him back elsewhere, or Jazz proves without a shadow of a doubt that he is the guy in center and, you know, there's no need to even look for a center fielder. He's your guy there. So the Marlins, that center field position is still one to watch. Um, so it's not quite that whole, I, I would say there's still a question mark there. There's still a question mark at shortstop. But I will say the one place where I think that all questions have been answered thus far early in the season uh, is in the bullpen. So you look at just the guys that they've added. They added uh, Matt Barnes. Uh, and while Richard Blyer is off to a fantastic start in in Boston in his own right, uh, Barnes has been a really solid veteran mid reliever for for the Marlins. Uh, they go out, they acquire JT Chagua, uh, who before his injury was without question the best reliever in the bullpen to start the season. Uh, he's got electric stuff. Hopefully, he's back within you know, a week or two, I know that he recently started throwing. So, you know, we look forward to more updates on him and getting him back. But even so between uh, AJ Puck and JT Chagua and Matt Barnes, and then you add a renaissance for a guy like Dylan Floro, who's been fantastic. Uh, Andrew Nardi starting to shake off a little bit of that rust. Uh, that he was showing at the beginning of the year and showing why Marlins fans wanted him up in the majors uh, last year so badly. Stephen Oker is even on a rehab assignment in in AAA, and I think he I think he struck out uh, three batters he faced in his in his lone rehab uh, assignment thus far. So you look at this Marlins bullpen, and one of the most interesting and unique things about it and something that I think will develop into a conversation as the year goes on, depending on, on how the bullpen continues to ingratiate themselves, is what do you do with all the lefties that you potentially have in the bullpen? So you've got pocket closer. You're going to have uh, Nardi. You're going to have Scott. You're going to have Okert. Um, that's, that's four lefties uh, in the bullpen. And I think that there's probably even somebody that I'm that I'm missing there, but I'm I'm drawing a blank. At, at some point, because of the fact that the Marlins have four lefties in the bullpen, that's pretty uncommon. Usually, most teams have two, maybe three. I do think that there will be conversations that we start to have maybe June, July, especially if the team's still a contender. Uh, that maybe there's a strength for strength deal down the line where. There's another contender that needs a, a lefty kind of specialist to go and, and get those matchup outs with late in the game. I think the Marlins would be wise to approach those trades where if a team has an extra outfield bat or they've got an extra shortstop that, you know, maybe they can kind of part ways with while the Marlins deal one of their lefties, whether it's Scott, whether it's Oker, whether it's, uh, I don't think they would, I wouldn't deal Puck or, or Nardi. Really, I think that conversation more so comes down to uh, Scott and Oker uh, as to which lefties you would be willing to part with. Um, but that's definitely something that will continue to to develop down the road. Um, like I said, the center field position is still one that needs to be filled as far as I'm concerned, uh, either by Jazz proving himself or the Marlins making an adjustment there. Shortstop position, another one that needs to be filled. That could be filled by filling the center field position and moving Jazz to short. Um, so there are a bunch of different ways to go about it if you're the Miami Marlins. But overall, I think right now you have to be bullish about what you're seeing from this team, considering the quality of the opponents that they face. Uh, you've got Minnesota who just steamrolled the Yankees. You played the Mets in two series. You played the Phillies who are arguably, at least so far this year, the worst team you faced uh, thus far. And, you just beat the the Arizona Diamondbacks, uh, who had been playing really well prior to uh, prior to coming in on this series in Miami. So the Marlins at seven and seven, it's definitely a big win. Definitely a lot to be positive about. Now, don't remember. Or definitely a lot to be uh, proud about. That's why you know we do these things live, and sometimes it's a uh, a slip of the tongue. 
don't forget uh, to like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, really helps grow the channel over here at Five Reasons Sports uh, and support what we do. So this is Eric. This has been Gone Fishing. Um, and I do have, before I go here, the prize pick pick of the day is going to be Braxton Garrett over four and a half strikeouts. Um, Trevor Rogers had seven last night against this Diamondbacks lineup. Uh, Garrett, for for not being the most overpowering guy, not having the velo that that a guy like Rogers does, he has really good swing of this stuff on his off-speed pitches. And at four and a half, I think that number is just a little bit low. I would go over on strikeouts for Braxton Garrett today uh, at 4 p.m. against the Arizona Diamondbacks. So once again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Uh, do all that good stuff. Really helps grow the channel. And don't forget, when you do play prize picks, uh, remember promo code 5 for an initial uh, deposit up to 100 or for initial deposit match up to $100. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.